direction this morning. So as we worship, as we praise, feel free to bring your offerings and tithes up throughout worship set. Come on, let's praise. Come on, let's celebrate resurrection, amen. Do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? I see lightning, I hear thunder. Something stirring six feet under. Dead things coming back to life again. I believe there's about to be another resurrection. Come on, say, I see signs. I see signs and I see wonders I see bursts of living color Dead things coming back to life again I believe there's about to be another resurrection Come on, let's prophesy, come alive Come alive Wait and gave us eternal life. Come on, sing that with me. If you see what I see, that the grave is empty, then you know what I know. Anything is possible. If you see what I see, come on, say that. That the grave is empty, then you know what I know, anything, anything is possible. Do you see what I see? Hey. Do you see what I see? Come on, sing out with us. Do you see? Do you see what I see? I see signs and I see wonders.
You took on our frame You walked in our pain Now you're taking us higher Come on, you stepped in the time You stepped in the time You laid down your life to save us You took all our shame On the cross he was laid now you're taking us out. Come on, sing. We go from glory to glory to glory. We'll never be the same. We'll never be the same. We go from glory to glory to glory. We're forever changed. We're forever changed. Yes. You call me a friend Brought into your endless kingdom By the blood I was made No longer a slave And now you're taking us higher We go from glory to glory to glory We'll never be the same
you, Jesus, for resurrection. Thank you, Jesus. How great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven. Spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my Lord. Hallelujah. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin.
exalt Jesus tonight, whose blood has washed our sins away. Brought us into light of day. To Him be the glory. Come on, every voice exalting the Lord. To Him be the power. To Him be all majesty. And all to me. Ever living one, the one who was in this and this to come, the firstborn from among the dead, the Almighty and omnipotent. To Him be.
second, why don't you just lift your praise to him for what he did on that cross and what he did in that tomb and what he does forevermore. Why don't you give him glory for that? Why don't you give him praise for that? Lord, we praise you. We pray, we stand in this room today because of you and only because of you. We live today, we have hope today, we have life today only because of you, Jesus. Because of the cross that you carried, because of the sins and the shame that you took from us and placed upon yourself. And on that Sunday, you resurrected to show us that you have defeated all of that. You completed the work, it is finished. There is nothing else left for me to do but to praise you. There is nothing left for me to do but to exalt your holy name. There is not a single thing I can do to add to the sacrifice of Christ except praise and exalt you, Jesus. To Him be the glory. He deserves it. To Him be the power. To Him be all majesty. Yeah, and all dominion forever. Come on. Come on, church. Come on, church. To Him be all the glory. To Him be all majesty. To Him be all the power and all dominion forever and ever and ever. Amen. To Him who was and is and is to come. To the Almighty, to the Omnipotent. To Him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let's give one more shout of praise to our God. To Him be the glory. Amen. Well, good morning, church. Thank you, worship team. That was so powerful. It's good to be in the house of the Lord together. Amen. I want to welcome all of you, whether you're here in the room or joining us online, whether it's your first time or your second time, or you've been here for ages like I have. I want to welcome you to Resurrection Sunday. My name is Melanie, and I would love to meet you if I had not had the chance to meet you. And especially if you are brand new, we would love for you to stop by our welcome table out in the lobby just to get an opportunity to meet you in person and answer any questions that you might have about CCF. And then I have just a couple of announcements for you. As Elias mentioned in the beginning of the service, if you brought your tithes and offerings, we have baskets in the front and in the back. And so we welcome you to bring those at any point in the service. And then today is Easter Sunday, so we will be having an egg hunt after church. So I want to invite you. I don't care how old you are, young or old, stay for the egg hunt. We have hospitality set up for you. And I'm telling you, it's going to be an egg extravaganza. I just had to get that Easter joke in there. But all kidding aside, stay in fellowship with one another. It's important. Amen. Well, if you're able to stand at this moment, I'm going to ask you to stand one more time. We believe in the powerful word of God. We believe in the power of our words that are spoken in the name of Jesus. So today we are going to declare a blessing over one another and the offering that is being received today. The words will be up on the screen and at the count of three, we will say them together. One, two, three. Father, we celebrate the gift of your son, Jesus. We receive the sacrificial gift of Jesus' life for our lives, and we bless one another with embracing this gift so that our lives will glorify the risen Lord. Jesus, we declare that you are Lord and Savior who died and rose again so that we may live abundant, transformed lives and be yours forever. It is our joy to give you our tithes and offerings, and we gratefully declare you are our provider. 
Holy Spirit, bless today's offering and do what you will with it. In Jesus' holy, mighty name, amen. Good morning to everyone in the room. Good morning to everyone online. Welcome to CCF. My name is Janelle. And my name is Cam. And we are so glad that you are here today. We are part of the pastoral team here at CCF, and we are honored to celebrate Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday with all of you. Amen. Amen. We want to try something here. He is risen. He is risen. Okay. Well, uh, let's try Do that again, again. With, with Pastor Janelle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe an Australian accent will yeah, change things. I think things. that'll help it, yeah. He is risen. He is risen. Yeah, it was definitely the Australian accent, that's for sure. <laughs> for sure. Well, how many of you know that the miracle of Easter is that God came in flesh as Jesus, and through his life and his death and his resurrection, we have a way now to be an everlasting relationship with God forevermore. Amen? Amen. 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 And the good news is the greatest news that Jesus stepped into all that was broken to restore it, didn't he? And in his resurrection, we are able to arise through his spirit to new life. Amen. It is good news. Amen. Come on. Come on. Well, today, millions of people are celebrating Easter around the world. And for some, it looks like Easter egg hunts. For some, it looks like wearing bright colors. For some, it looks like a lot, a lot of chocolate. <laughs> Praise the Lord, eh? right? <laughs> Three of you like three of you like chocolate. Great. Rest for us. Good. No, lots of bunny-shaped chocolates out there, right? So uh, the question that we're begging to know this morning is what makes us any different as Christians? What makes us any different as people who are gathering in bright colors and doing an Easter egg hunt and have lots of chocolate out there for your kids? Sorry, parents. Uh, but what makes us any different? Proclaiming the resurrection. What is it about the resurrection that changes everything in our lives? What is it about this man named Jesus who lived and died and rose again that continues to change our lives and not just influences us for one happy Sunday, but every day being filled with his resurrection power? What is, what is the thing about this man that encourages us and empowers us that when you go to work tomorrow morning, his resurrection power is still at work in your life? When you struggle with relationships or family members or things going on in this world, his resurrection power is influencing and impacting and directing us in to eternal life. Today, beloved, we're going to unpack the power of the resurrection and what this means for us as followers and believers of Christ Jesus and what it looks like to live into and unto this resurrection power. So if you have your Bibles, why don't you open to Ezekiel uh, chapter 37. That's in the Old Testament, Ezekiel 37. And that's where we're going to be at this morning. As you turn there... I have a question for the room. By a show of hands, how many of you have ever experienced when all hope was lost moments in your life? Anybody? If you are alive, your hand should be raised right now. <laughs> I've, I think all of us have experienced when all hope was lost moments in our lives. You've seen them in movies. Um, I root for sports teams that, uh, I just call that the regular season uh, for the sports teams that I root for. All hope is lost. Like baseball season has started. I'm like, yep, it's done. Uh, let's move on, right? Or any parents in the room some days feel like all hope is lost. <laughs> yeah. Uh, your workplace, we could go back to 2020. We could think about relationships, marriages. You know those moments when you feel hopeless, breathless, like you don't know which way is up or down, which way is home, who your friends or family are. Just those moments where you're thinking, gosh, I must have messed something up real good and I'm being punished. Or maybe those moments where you think you've done everything right and God has just abandoned you and all this bad stuff is happening in your life. Beloved, it's in these moments that we find ourselves thinking from hopelessness and despair. And what we try to do is work our way out of it. And what we end up with is more hopelessness and breathlessness. We feel stuck and maybe we're just trying to give up in that place. And I bring this up not to lull you to sleep on Easter morning and to say, God bless you, go home, have fun eating chocolate. <laughs> You're depressed now, so sorry. I say this to say, this is the context of what we're going to be reading this morning. Ezekiel 37 
is a prophetic word that's given to God's chosen people, the Israelites. This is a group of people that God hand-selected. He blessed them, placed them in a land of promise, gave him his word, and this was a way for them to be blessed, to be a blessing to the people around them. But because of sin, because of their disobedience, because of them breaking and severing relationship with God and others, they were exiled. This is an exact replica of what happened at creation. God created everything and it was good. He formed us in his image and likeness. We were in perfect right standing with God and he gave us his word and his direction and we broke it. We sinned, we disobeyed. And because of that, there is separation. He exiled us from the garden. And in the exact same way, the Israelites are exiled from their homeland. They are foreigners. They are strangers in a distant, strange place. They are very much in the valley of the shadow of death and despair. But beloved, how many of you know that we are in this place? That is when God reaches in with his resurrection power. Amen? Amen? Amen. That's when God brings hope and breath and life to us. He reaches in and he raises us up. This is the story of all of us in this room. This is the story of scripture. In Genesis, there are families who lie and cheat and deceive and kill and act in violence. And God blesses them and brings forth redemption. In Exodus, the people of God are in bondage and slavery and he hears their cry and he delivers them from slavery and brings them into a land of promise by his hand. David, the king, is surrounded by people who want to attack and kill him and God provides rescue and refuge for him. Daniel is thrown into a den of lions because he won't bow in this place of worship and in the midst of this, God delivers him from the mouths of the lions. Jonah, as he's running from the Lord and the call that's placed on his life, finds himself in the belly of a fish for three days and three nights and the Lord rescues him from that place. The disciples are living mundane meaningless lives until Jesus shows up and tells them, follow me and you will find eternal, everlasting, pure, abundant life. Beloved, this is our story and we know these things to be true, amen? amen. But isn't it so interesting that when we encounter all hope is lost moments, we tend to forget about this stuff? We tend to go, yeah, that was something the Lord did, but what's he doing now? And so we might end up pursuing something that's easier or more convenient. We might end up being in this place where we try to work ourselves out of the pit. And you know what it does? It leaves us more hopeless. It leaves us more breathless. It leaves us feeling dead because we're striving and working to earn something that we can't make it out of and we get stuck in the valley. And interestingly, we just celebrated Good Friday. We celebrated the day in which our Savior was crucified to atone for our sin. And the disciples of Jesus knew this was going to happen. But do you know what happened when he was buried? They all left. They all went back to their old lives because they thought their uh, place to hope and redemption was through their own strength, through their own striving, through their own working, through their ethnic background or birth line or human strength or militant force. But Jesus told them what would happen. He said it in Matthew and in Mark and in Luke and in John, three times, four times even, this is what would happen. He would be taken by the Jewish religious leaders. He would be put on trial. He would be declared innocent by Pontius Pilate, by Herod, but the Jewish people threatened to throw a riot. So instead of, of, of releasing Jesus, he was turned over to be tortured and crucified. But do you know what, beloved? It's through this action that Jesus shows us this is the way to hope. This is the way to breath. This is the way to life. He pays the ultimate price. He shed his blood for the atonement and forgiveness of our sins. He laid down and paid what we could not and restored what we could not. He conquered sin and he died to do so. Amen. And it's exactly as he told the disciples. It's exactly as the prophets in the Old Testament spoke of. It's exactly as it's spoken and sung in the Psalms of David as well. So why did the disciples leave? Why do we forget when all hope is lost moments in our lives? Why do we forget? Jesus told them it was written. They knew it was going to happen, but they left when all hope seemed lost. You see, when we get stuck in the valley and pit of despair, that becomes our mindset. That becomes the way that we think and act and speak and live. And what ends up happening is we need, we need God's word to restore and revive and resurrect us. And how many of you know that the good news of Easter is that when all hope seemed lost, God's word came in flesh. 
and he spoke revival and he spoke res resurrection and he spoke restoration to us who had broken things. The good news is that although Jesus died and was buried on our behalf because of sin, the good news is this, he rose from the grave, beloved. The grave is still empty. He not only conquered sin, but he overcame death, hell, and the grave exactly as he had said. This is resurrection power, and this is what meets us in hopelessness. This is what meets us in despair, and it speaks hope. It speaks breath. It speaks life. You know, after he's dead and the disciples are going back to their ways, Mary and Martha show up to the tomb thinking he's dead and they don't even recognize him until he calls them out by name and his resurrection power and his word awakens them, awakens them to follow him once again. The disciples go back to their old lives of fishing, of working, and Jesus encounters them in their work and calls them back to become apostles. They're doubting. He shows them the scars in his wrists, in his feet, in his side, and calls them to believe once again. And it can only take place by resurrection power. This is our story, beloved. By all means, all hope had been lost. And by all means, when this happens, we can go back to striving our way out of hopelessness, but it's not going to lead anywhere. This is what's going to lead us somewhere, an encounter with the Savior an encounter with his strength, an encounter with his hope, an encounter with his resurrection power that calls us to rise by his strength, not our own. The good news this Easter, beloved, is this. When you feel hopeless, when you feel dry, when you feel like you don't know which way is up or down and you don't have any life in you, there is good news for you this Easter. We don't have to work our way out of the grave. We don't have to work our way out of despair. We can arise in the one who already did it for us. If there was a man that prophesied that he would be dead, killed, buried, and rise from the grave, and he actually did it, you should just follow him, beloved. <laughs> and he's got good news for you this morning. If you feel hopeless, if you feel like there's no breath in your lungs, if you feel lifeless, there is resurrection power for you today. So we want to encourage you this morning to embrace the good news of Easter. You can arise in the Savior's strength today. You can arise in the Savior's strength, not your own. Amen? So because this is God's word, because it calls us to action, I'd love for us to stand to our feet one more time this morning as we read from the word of the Lord. Ezekiel 37 verses 1 through 14 says this, The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath into you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. Prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, breath, from the four winds, and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood on their feet a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say our bones are dried up, our hope is gone, and we are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. My people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then my people will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. Let's read verse 14 together. I will put my spirit in you and you will live. I will settle you in your own land, then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and I have done it, declares the Lord. Amen. Stay standing and let's pray together. Father God, thank you for your word, for the gift of your word in our life. Thank you that you became word and flesh and dwelt among us. God, we pray that in these moments ahead that every word within your word would go into our lives and not return void. Holy Spirit, we pray that you would illuminate the places in our life that still need your touch, your breath, your life, your resurrection power. 
God, we thank you that today is a day that we can celebrate, but even more than that, we thank you that we celebrate every day that you came, you died, you rose again, simply to know us and love us and set us free. We thank you for the gift of gathering as your people on this Resurrection Sunday. So we give you this time, we give you our lives, we open up our hearts and our hands and our minds to you and say, have your way in this place, in Jesus' name. And everyone says, Amen, amen. You may be seated and as you do, turn to someone and say, dem bones, dem bones, dem dry bones. <laughs> so how many of you in the room or maybe watching online have ever said something along the lines of, I give up? And I see a few hands. How about, I can't do this? Or this will be the end of me? Or the generation today just says, I can't. I just can't. <laughs> I've heard that a lot of times from my children. There are words and phrases that we use to kind of encapsulate how we feel, what our experience is. And I said all of those and more earlier this week when my husband and I started at a new gym. I can't do this, I give up, this will be the end of me. There are parts of my legs that still hurt, not from my workout that happened yesterday or Friday or Thursday, but Monday last week. I am so sad there are stairs to get up here today. <laughs> but as Pastor Cam shared, that in this passage, the people of Israel were in a bad place again. And the phrase that we read from them as part of chapter 37 was a common statement at that time. Our bones are dried up, our hope is gone, we are cut off. It described what they were experiencing, it described how they felt, but more than that, it described what they believed. It was their phrase. But God had a plan, he always has a plan. And let me tell you, our God is not afraid of dead things, is he? In fact, those parts of our life and our story where it feels like something has died and it is hopeless and it has dried up, that's where the Spirit of God does His most miraculous work. Wouldn't you agree? Second Corinthians conveys that even when we are at our weakness, not only is He still strong, but His strength shows up for us. And so for our first point today, we want you to know that no matter what you are facing or navigating, no matter what you are in the midst of, on wrestling with right now, no matter what you might be recovering from, when you choose to arise in the Savior's strength, your hope is refreshed. The Spirit of God took the prophet Ezekiel to this place, to this valley of dry bones, not simply to show him what was, but to show him what could be. The passage says that the Lord walked Ezekiel back and forth through the bones, but he didn't leave him there, did he? That's what the enemy does. He loves to walk us past our failures and say, look what happened, look what you did. But God walks us past and says, even that I can overcome. Even that I can redeem. Even when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, Psalm 23 tells us we are not alone. He is with us there. We fear no evil, isn't that right? You can trust that the hand of God will only lead you to places with the intention of life and breakthrough. He led Ezekiel into this valley and then through this valley and out of this valley. He led Jesus into the desert, through the desert and out of the desert. So beloved, in whatever God is leading you into, through or out of right now, you can trust that it's with the purpose of seeing that your hope is refreshed. It's what he does for us when we find ourselves in places that feel dry and hopeless, even disjointed and disconnected like the bones of this valley. And you might be asking the question, but why, how? This is so unfair. Why do we find ourselves in this place of hopelessness? Quite simply, the answer to that is always sin. God created Israel to be his people, to be a great nation, but through their choices, they broke themselves apart. They were unified, but they became disjointed through sin. God's design, his very plan for creation for Israel, for you and for me, was extremely good. Genesis tells us that. They had it good, right? They had everything they needed. They were in covenant relationship with each other, but more importantly, with a good God. But they chose sin. We choose sin. And the consequence of sin always leads to a place that is dry, disconnected, and without hope. It always leads to a place 
that is far from God. If you find yourself in that place today, that, that place of hopelessness or despair, it's always a result of sin. And maybe it's a sinful choice that you have made or continue to make that have you there. To be honest, the pain in my legs <laughs> is part of writing wrong choices that I made. Over a season of time, months, maybe years, I would go home after a long day and be like, Netflix will solve my woes. <laughs> that bowl of cereal, which always tastes better at night, will make me feel good. When God was saying, get in my word, get outside, let me refresh you and bring you hope. Let me pour life and joy into you. Those things will only add heaviness and despair. Maybe you are being impacted by the result of someone else's choices. Either way, we were never created for death or decay, but for life. So in every place where hope is dry, it can be traced back to being a result of sin. That sounds like bad news, doesn't it? But the good news of the gospel and of Resurrection Sunday is found in Ephesians 2, verse 4 to 5, where it says, because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. He saw that we were hopeless, but he didn't leave us there. Jesus came in flesh into our world to see for himself that our hope would be refreshed. He declared a good word, the word of the Lord over us, over our dry, dead bones. He gave us the Holy Spirit, Ruach in Hebrew, Numa in Greek, the very breath of God that lives within us. And through his work on the cross, Jesus reconnected us to the Father and to each other. So if your hope is dry because of sin today, let me tell you, there is nothing you can do to refresh it on your own. A winning lottery ticket won't fix it. A new pair of shoes won't make it go away. A vacation won't right everything wrong in the world. It is only through Jesus and through choosing to arise in his strength that our hope can be refreshed today. What do you say, 10 a.m.? Does that sound right? Amen. 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 Come on. Come on. So not only can our hope be refreshed, but when we arise in the, in the Savior's strength, this is our second point this morning, our breath will be restored. Amen. I remember playing uh, Pop Warner football and we had a drill uh, that we had two guys on uh, two different lines and you'd run around the lines and then meet in, meet in the middle. And one guy had the football. The other guy's job was to tackle that guy. And I remember being the smallest guy on the team and trying to, trying to earn my stripes and show who I was. So I picked the biggest guy on the team. That was a bad decision, friends. <laughs> that guy rung my bell <laughs> and I laid on the ground like the bones of Israel. <laughs> I was dead and lifeless. And no matter what I tried to do, I, he knocked the breath out of my lungs. I could not get my breath back. Has anybody been in that moment before where you feel like spiritually, emotionally, physically, mentally, you cannot breathe? Just the weight of everything crushing down on you. The reality, beloved, is that when we are in all hope is lost moments, our breath feels like it's gone. We feel like we are suffocating. And this is exactly what is happening for the people of Israel in this time. Ezekiel 37 declares this picture of bones that are scattered out. They are dry. They are hopeless. And then the word of the Lord comes to them and they come back together. They piece back together, bone by bone, sinew and ligament and flesh cover them. But you know what's weird is that they're missing breath. They're missing life. Have you ever been in a moment where you feel like you have everything together, but there's something still missing? Like you feel like everything's connected. You put it all together, but there's something that is gone. Beloved, this is exactly what is happening in this moment. And we see it in Genesis chapter two. God forms humanity from the earth and they're, they're a being, but there's no life in them until God breathes his spirit, his ruach, his breath into their lungs. And then they become a living being. Without God's breath, we are just dirt, beloved. But with his breath, we are a living, moving being. And we can feel like we have it all together, but without God's breath, we are in desperate need of his word and his breath and his life to come to us and pick us up from that place. 
Israel is breathless. They are lifeless. They are looking to other gods to fill their lungs. They're looking to other people to fill their lungs. They're looking to certain practices to fill their lungs. But here's God's promise. Even when we go looking astray, even when we wander and choose other gods and idols and sin, God's promise is this. He will revitalize the dead with his spirit. He will reach into your valley and rebuild what is destroyed. And he will fill it once again with his presence, with his life, with his spirit. For these people in Ezekiel 37, they had been conquered by Babylon, by Assyria, by a number of different nations. And when they got conquered, their temple was destroyed, their place of worship, their homes, their city walls, all that they were was gone and devastated. But here was the Lord's promise to them that he would rebuild their nation once again. And he would call it Yahweh Shema, the Lord is there. How many of you know this is what God does for us through Jesus? That although, as Pastor Janelle said, we were dead in our transgressions, it is because he is rich in mercy that he has made us alive in Christ. He breathes life to those who are dead. And if you feel dead and lifeless today, he can breathe life into your lungs, beloved. And when the bones come together and breath is breathed into them, they become an army. They become a force. They become a multitude. And this is exactly what the Spirit of God does is he takes us who are breathless because of sin and idolatry and he overcomes our dead nature by entering into our graves and breathing his Spirit into us so that we can find life and be raised as an army, as a family, as a force, as a multitude once again. You know, this week, um, my wife gave me a call and we have a number of things uh, happening in our lives, a number of different stressful things. And so I was expecting a really good call for like an offer on a house or something like that. And I got, hey, my tire's flat. <laughs> I'm like, great, okay. So I go to switch cars with her. I check it out and I go, yeah, we'll just, we'll just take it to a tire shop. They'll put a patch on. We'll throw some air in there. Be back on the road in no time. So I take it. And the guy tells me, hey, unfortunately, this went through right, right in the middle. There's a heat, uh, heat ring around it. You got to get a new, a new tire on that. I'm like, okay, that's fine. And he goes, and also another one's bald. I was like, oh, it's bald today? Okay, cool. <laughs> so we needed two new tires. And the bad news is we got two new tires. Um, <laughs> for our bank account, right? The good news is we got tires. Air got put in them. We were on the road again. It was no big deal. But here's the thing, beloved. If we think all we need is a patch and air to get back on the road again, we are gravely mistaken. Because the process that God does through the work of, of Jesus and the work of his spirit is he doesn't just take us and put a patch on us and some air and pat us on the butt and get us back into the game. He makes us brand new, beloved. He makes us brand new and he doesn't just put air into us. He puts his spirit, the same spirit who raised Jesus from the dead. And he gives us a way and a direction and a purpose so that we can move in the way everlasting. If you think that all you need is a patch on your life and some air, you are going to leak air everywhere and you are going to go nowhere. When you feel like breath is gone, beloved, here is God's promise. He will enter into the places where you feel dead and like there is nothing working in your lungs and he will restore you to brand new and breathe his life, his resurrection power into your lungs so that you can go and be in the place that he wants you to be in. And here's what the, the beautiful uh, full circle of this story is. Just like the promise was to Israel that he would restore and rebuild and call that city, the Lord is there. That's what he's made us, beloved. He's restored us and rebuilt us and put his presence in us. Paul writes it this way. Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in your midst? If anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone. The new is here. Now the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Beloved, you and I through the resurrection power are not just put a patch on and filled with air. We are made brand new and filled with the spirit of God. And as we arise in his strength, he connects us and fills us and sends us with a purpose and a direction so that everywhere we go, we are now in an environment of freedom. We are filled with the atmosphere of heaven. We are filled with the very presence of God and we can breathe that upon the people around us. Amen? Amen. 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 From what we know and from the choices that we read about in the Bible, the people of Israel were just surviving in this moment. They weren't thriving. Here in the room or watching online, I think we've all been there at one point or another, right? Just surviving, just getting through another day, another week, another hour, just getting to retirement. I'm a long way away. 
But unlike God who leads us and never leaves us, sin ultimately leads us to a place where we are left far from God, hopeless, breathless, and diminished. Remember their phrase, our bones are dried up, our hope is gone, we are cut off. When God tells Ezekiel that the bones of the vision represent the people of Israel, God isn't agreeing with this declaration over themselves. He's simply agreeing with what the effects of sin have been. Sin always equals death, but God is never content to leave us in a place of death, even if it's where we have chosen to go or to be or to stay. Instead, just like these bones, the Lord declares promises of life over us, and he fulfills every single one of those promises in Jesus. So our third point for this morning is that when you choose to arise in the Savior's strength, your life, just like his, is resurrected. And in this passage, the parallels to the good news of the gospel are amazing. Can you see them? From verse 12 to 14, God promises that he will call them his people. He will open their graves. He will put his spirit within them. He will cause them to live and he will settle them in their own land. Jesus fulfills every one of these promises. He comes to all who are hopeless and breathless, diminished and far from God because of sin. And while he sees the truth of where they are, of where we are, he also calls us to a better way, to a way of life. He is the word of God in flesh who comes into our valleys of death and declares the breath of new life over us. And no matter what you have done, no matter the choices you have made or the ways that you feel like you might have failed, Jesus makes a way for you to be raised to life. You might feel far from him, but he calls you to himself. You might feel dead and buried, but through the cross, the grave, and the resurrection, Jesus has entered your grave to lead you out. You might feel inadequate, ill-prepared, insufficient, but he gives the gift of his spirit to live within you and empower you. Romans 8, 10 to 11 says, but if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit within you. God doesn't just give us a new land to settle in, but he chooses us as the place where he will settle. Like Pastor Cam said earlier, through Jesus, he rebuilds us into the dwelling place of God, the temple of the Holy Spirit. So whether it's to the bones of those from long ago or the bones of us today, God has fulfilled every promise to those who are far from him through Jesus. It's through Jesus we are raised to life. It's through Jesus that we can be called God's own. For God so loved the world, didn't he, that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. First Peter 2 verse 10 says, once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Our bones are dried up, our hope is gone, we are cut off. That was their phrase. Hmm. Maybe that's your phrase today. Does one of those statements resonate with you? Does something in your life feel like it's dried up, dead, buried, unable to live again? Does something in your life, maybe a relationship or a situation, maybe a dream, does something in your life feel hopeless? Do you feel cut off from God? Like there's something in your story your past or your present, that he could never see or forgive or love. God's hope, his desire is that we will know him and in knowing him, we will choose him and in choosing him, we will choose the way of eternal life because he has chosen us, he has chosen you. This is where we see that our life is resurrected in Jesus. Well, beloved, the good news today is that we can arise in the Savior's strength, amen? Amen. Because his promise is that our hope will be refreshed and our breath will be restored and our life will be resurrected. 
So as we close up our time in worship today, we want to give an opportunity to respond to the power of the resurrection. So if you're able, we'd love for everybody to stand to their feet. I'm going to call the worship team forward. And one of the ways in which we want to respond to this message of the resurrection, this power of the resurrection, is in just a a few moments, we are going to praise our risen Savior together. He is worthy of every praise. Amen? Amen. We're going to lift our voices and we're going to do that in just a second. But the other way that we want to respond this morning is by giving opportunity for people to respond to the saving grace of Jesus to respond to his love that gives hope and breath and life. And so maybe you're in this room and you've been hearing us talk about this guy, Jesus. You've been hearing us talk about this guy who dead and was, died and was buried and was raised from the dead. You're thinking, what does this have to do with me? And maybe the Lord's been moving on your heart. And I want to say this today, beloved, today is the day of salvation. If you have never said yes to Jesus, or maybe you've said yes and you've run away, today can be the day when you come back and declare your faith and alliance to him. Today can be that day. And so just a moment, I'm going to have everybody bow their heads and close their eyes, and I'm going to count to three. And if the Lord's been moving on your heart, if you've been hearing specific words that were meant for you, or if you've been feeling this warmth or this cold or something moving on your heart, that's called the presence of God. And he's tapping you and saying, today's the day to come home. And so I want everybody to bow their heads and close their eyes. And I'm going to count to three. And if you feel that nudge in your heart and your your mind, if you feel like today is the day and you want to respond, on the count of three, I want you to raise your hand, open your eyes and look at me. So number one, God created everything and it was perfectly good. He made humanity in his image and likeness and had us in right relationship with him. But we broke it through sin. We broke relationship, we disobeyed, we chose another direction, but God had a plan of redemption too. God came in flesh as a man named Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He lived a perfect life and he died a perfect death to atone for every place of sin and brokenness that we had committed. He was buried on our behalf and he rose from the grave so that we could have right standing and right relationship with God forevermore. He saw us with no hope. He saw us with no breath. He saw us with no life. And he came to give us life to the full. And so today, beloved, if you feel like the Lord is pressing on your heart and you want to say yes to his love, open your eyes, raise your hand and look at me. Three. I see that hand. Just keep it up, brother. Keep it up. If you feel like today is the day, maybe you've said yes, maybe you've never said yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. What I want us all to do is I want us to pray together with our brother who has his hands lifted. So I want you to pray this with me. Jesus, I say yes to you. I declare you are my Lord. You are my Savior. I need you. I receive your forgiveness for my sin. I receive your grace, your mercy, and your love. Fill me with your hope. Fill me with your breath. Fill me with your life forevermore. I say yes to you. And I commit my life life to following you. you. In Jesus' name, name. amen and amen. Let's celebrate that, beloved. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. So if you responded today, if your hand was raised, if your hand wasn't raised and you prayed that prayer and you want to know the next steps of this journey with Jesus, Pastor Mel is over here in the corner and she would love to talk to you about those next steps. You also see up here that we have a baptismal and in just a moment, we're gonna celebrate the resurrection through baptisms today. Praise the Lord. And we've already talked with a few folks that we have their stories. We're gonna show those. But if you feel like today is the day for you to declare your your faith publicly, come and talk with me. I'm gonna be right next to Pastor Mel. We wanna get you those next steps. We have extra shirts. We got extra shorts. We got extra towels. We got what you need to get you in in this baptismal today. Amen. 
Let's celebrate, let's respond and worship. Our Savior is risen and His resurrection power changes every part of our lives. Amen? Amen. Amen. God, maker of heaven and earth, defender of the weak, conqueror of the grave, great is the Lord. Just 
just lift your voice for a minute, church, and say, great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord, in my life. Great are you, Lord, in every circumstance. Great are you, Lord. We love you, Lord God. There's no celebration like the celebration of Jesus. What a gift it is. It's a gift of new life. It's a celebration of life. And I can't think of a better way, a better expression visually of that gift of new life than water baptisms. And so as part of our service today, we're gonna get to celebrate with some people who've made that decision. I'm gonna invite you to take your seats. Baptism is an outward demonstration of what God has done inside of us. We were dry bones, but through Jesus, our hope is refreshed, our breath is restored. We are resurrected into new life and into restored relationship with God. Romans 6 tells us that we were therefore buried with Him, Jesus, through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Just like Jesus was crucified on the cross and buried in the tomb, the symbolism of baptism is that we choose to believe that when we confess our sins and declare Jesus as Lord of our life, our old sinful self has died, is buried, and it stays there. It doesn't follow us out, does it? So as we go into the water, we believe that it declares we've been raised to new life in the power of Jesus. No matter what our story has looked like up until this point, this is where we choose to arise in Jesus. And today we are so excited to celebrate two of our friends, Jeremy and Kamoza, who are making this decision today. So Jeremy, I'm gonna ask you to get ready in the baptismal and we're gonna point our eyes to the screen and hear a little bit more about his story, his journey to get to this place today. Point your eyes to the screen. My testimony is that whenever like I was going to church, because I'm going to church for just about my whole life, especially here, yeah, my connection with God wasn't the best compared to a lot of people that I knew, compared to a lot of people that I know now. And I know good and well that I like to strengthen that with in any way possible. Last year, there was something that happened that was very personal to me that made me realize that I wanted to commit my life to God and Jesus and to this church because I realized that time is short and I need to understand that every minute counts. I want to be baptized because I have never been baptized before and I want to be able to wash the 16, 17 years of sin that has been on my back. I want to be baptized to show that I am a follower of Christ. Jeremy, you have literally grown up in CCF, and I know there are numerous, numerous adults in this congregation who have watched and walked alongside of you, and you are such a testament to growth and development and incredible incredible, incredible love of God. And it has just been an honor to watch your journey, my friend. Such an honor. So I'm going to ask you a couple of questions before we baptize you, all right? So Jeremy, you believe in Jesus Christ. Yes. Do you believe that Jesus died for our sins, was buried for three days, and then rose from the grave? Yes. And do you believe that he conquered it all? Yes. Amen, my friend. Amen. All right. Well, we are going to do this. All right. So you can plug your nose if you want. Here you go. Hold your arm like this. I need this. So, Jeremy, it is our honor to baptize you now in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let's congratulate Jeremy on this decision. (laughs) 
It is amazing to see what God has been doing in the life of this young man. So as Pastor Cam shared earlier, if that's stirring something in your heart right now, we have everything you need to jump in the waters today, but I'm gonna invite another friend, Kamoza, to join us up here in the baptismal. <laughs> Welcome him. So Kamoza, um, we have watched you grow. We have watched you develop and we have watched you and Jeremy become powerful, powerful speakers. And so I wanna give you an opportunity right now to tell us how you came to know Jesus. So I've been going to church my whole life and like the pandemic kind of changed that. I wasn't going to church as much. I wasn't as focused on getting, bettering my relationship. And uh, sorry, the water's cold. <laughs> the past, uh, <laughs> the past year, I've really gotten involved in church. Uh, thank you to everybody who uh, donated to the Colorado trip because that's really what got me going to church more, like trying to better my relationship. Uh, I'd like to thank Aaron and everybody involved in the church because I'm doing sound now with Jeremy and everybody. And it's kind of just, it's kind of just been like, uh, I'm really involved now. Also my birthday was last week and I turned 18. So now I feel like it's a good time to do it. And I'm just really appreciative of everybody who got me to this point and I'm ready to be baptized. <laughs> so Kamoza, I wanna, I wanna ask you a few questions and then we're gonna baptize you. So do you believe that Jesus Christ is Lord? Yes, I do. Do you believe that he died for all, was buried and on the third day rose from the grave? Yes. And do you believe that he conquered it all? Yes. Amen, my friend. All right, if you wanna plug your nose, you can. <laughs> and you can grab, grab your arm. Yeah, just like that. Yeah, there you go. All right, Kamoza, it is our honor to baptize you now in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Come on, church. You know the drill. Let's cheer. Shout your faith, our hearts will cry, and these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. All the earth will shout your praise. celebrate this morning. Rachel is going to join us in the baptismal. Thank you. So Rachel, you are another one who has I mean, gone through most of your adolescence at CCF, and it's been an honor to watch your journey. So I want to give you an opportunity to tell the congregation um, how you found Jesus. Uh, I was going through rough times uh, a little bit earlier than most kids ev should ever have to, really. And um, I was in a very dark place for a long time and I didn't want anybody to know about it because I didn't want people to have pity on me. But church always was a place of peace for me. That's amazing, that's amazing. Rachel, why do you want to be baptized today? Because it's another step that I'm taking to give my life over to God. I love it, my friend. I love it. Well, this is awesome. So Cam's going to step forward, and I'm going to ask you a few questions, and then we are going to baptize you. This is such an honor. <laughs> so, Rachel, do you believe that Jesus Christ is Lord? Yes. Do you believe that he died for all, was buried, and then rose again? I always have. 
I love that. And do you believe he conquered it all? Yes. Wonderful. Why don't you plug your nose? Well, Rachel, it's our honor to baptize you now in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Nice. All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry and these folks will sing. Let's give him exaltation, worship, praise. He deserves Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Well, he is risen. Amen. Amen. You can arise in the Savior's strength today. There is hope. There is breath. There is life for each one of us. We give praise to the Lord for the baptisms today and the decisions made today. As we conclude our time, we'd love for you to stand to your feet and extend your hands in a posture of receiving as we declare a benediction today from 1 Corinthians 15. Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, beloved. The first fruits of those who have fallen asleep for since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead also comes through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. Where, O death, then, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. Yes. Say thanks be to God, church. Thanks be to God. He gives us through the victory, through our Lord Jesus Christ, our King and our Savior forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Happy Easter, everybody.